I will now hand over to Shepard Scotella to, to share the word. Um, a very good morning, um, brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, from wherever it is that you are joining us, I greet you um, with Jesus' joy, and I pray um, a blessing over you and, and your loved ones at this uh, point in time. Uh, a blessed Tuesday at the Theatre of Grace. We call it Transformation Tuesday, so let me also wish you a blessed Transformation Tuesday um, this morning. Um, I'm going to go straight to the word because I realize that time uh, is, is an issue for me, so I'm trying to discipline myself. Um, our key text for today is found in the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 14, um, verse 30, um, and it reads as follows, but when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. But when he, the he is Peter that we are talking about, for those of you who are not familiar with the story, but when he saw the wind and that it was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. If I were to give a title to the message of today, it would be the faith to see, the faith to see Jesus or rather the faith to focus. But before we go into um, that for today, I wanted to just give a, a brief recap um, of yesterday. Basically yesterday we spoke about the faith to see as Jesus sees, the faith to see as God sees. We spoke about um, looking at life basically from the vantage point of God, looking at life holistically from the vantage point of God. So. Um, as we are praying for faith this week, we are saying, Lord, all for that faith. We're praying and asking God for that faith. So yesterday we prayed for the faith to see opportunities, to see the land as, as, as it was the case with the spies, as God sees the opportunities. Therefore, approach them as God would approach them instead of being intimidated by the opportunities. We prayed and we continue to pray for the faith to see challenges, the giant in our lives as God sees them, because if we see them as God sees them, we'll be able to handle them and deal with them as God would handle them. And I think victory is found in the God, in the God approach, because if we don't, the actually the challenges, the giants in our lives, they simply defeat us before we even start. We prayed yesterday for the faith to see others as God sees them, for, um, as from our spouses, to our children, to our bosses, to the people that we call enemies. Yesterday, we prayed for the faith to see them as God sees them. Because if we see the enemies as God sees them, if we see our spouses as God sees them, if we see our children, if we see people, the sons and daughters of God as God sees them, we would deal with them as God would deal with them. And imagine what kind of world, what kind of marriages, what kind of companies we would have if we would take the approach of God, if we would take the glasses of God. And lastly, I emphasize this because it's an issue sometimes for myself. We prayed for the faith to see ourselves as God sees us. If you look at yourself from a human vantage point, if you look at yourself only with your own eyes, sometimes you will see yourself bigger than you should see yourself. And in most cases, you often see yourself as a grasshopper while God sees a mighty warrior. God sees a, a conqueror, but you are busy shrinking. In other words, yesterday we were saying that if, if we are to truly experience the promises of God, if we were to actually see the word of God come alive in our own lives, in reality, in our own lives, if we were to be the ones that complete the book of Hebrews 11, we need to keep asking God for that faith, that faith through which we are able to view situations, not as us, but as Christ in us and act not as us, but as Christ in us. So that is basically um, our message of yesterday. And I, I kept imagining to myself, suppose they had actually gone with the report of the majority. Suppose the majority had the final say. Suppose the eight spies, although they caused a lot of chaos, suppose they had the final say, this is what God would have said. None of them would have set foot in the promised land. And you might have a, a similar situation, my friend. You might have a similar situation about your own life. You know, I wonder what would happen. 
I wonder what would have happened in our lives, in our marriages, in our finances, if we had listened to God instead of others. You might be sitting here um, in, in the valley of decision. And in your ear, there are two voices ringing. There is your voice, or maybe even more, there is your voice ringing, there is the voice of others ringing, but there's also the voice of God. My friend, I want to commend and recommend to you the voice of God. You might be sitting um, and in your marriage, and your marriage is what, what, what sometimes people say, on the rocks. And, and there are many voices speaking. There is the voice of, of money speaking. There is the voice maybe of the sins of your spouse speaking. There is the voice of your extended family. There may even be the voice of your friend, but there's also the voice of God. I commend to you, my friend, the voice of God. Some of us are sitting with our finances. <laughs> By the time we get to the end of the month, there's no longer any money. And so there is the voice of your debtor speaking in your ears. There is the voice of all the financial issues speaking in your ears. But there is also the voice of God speaking in your ears. I want to commend you, my friends, the voice of God. And so that is basically yesterday. Yesterday we prayed and we continue to pray for the faith to see as Jesus sees. And therefore, we'll be able to act as Jesus acts this morning. Very briefly, we are praying. I want us to pray for the faith to see Jesus. I want us to pray for the faith to focus on Jesus. This morning, that's our prayer, the faith to focus on Jesus. Now, our memory text, you might have recognized it by now, that it comes from the story of Peter walking on the water. It comes from the story of Peter walking on the water, and I will not be able to go and read the story, but go and read it. And it takes place after the miracle of the 5,000, where Jesus himself, he showed himself mighty. He gave the people, yes, a miracle, but he also gave that miracle um, to the, the disciples. In fact, when the disciples went onto the boat, you would remember that when, when he had fed the 5,000 um, with two fish and five loaves, there was also, the, the, the Bible says, um, there were 12 baskets um, of bread and fish that were left over after the feeding of that miracle. And I do not think the number 12 is a coincidence. I think that each and every one of the disciples went into the boat with evidence that we have God among us and he performs miracles. So they went into the boat um, with that evidence. And so the boat that they were in is undergoing what is undergoing. They, it's going in through a storm, but in the boat, Jesus may not be there physically, but in the boat, there's plenty of evidence through those baskets of bread that we, Jesus saves, that Jesus performs miracles. But in a moment of challenges, like so many of us, we forget. We forget, we take our eyes off of even the very evidence that surrounds us in our lives. We take our eyes off Jesus. We take our eyes off the evidence that indeed Jesus lives. We take our eyes and we focus on that which we are going through. So Jesus compels them to go over to the other side. And not long before, um, in fact, as soon, not as soon, but soon after, let me put it like that. Soon after they get onto the boat, the storm appears. And, and it was not just as, because these were seasoned fishermen, um, but it was not after the, it was not just a small little storm that they could, you know, um, uh, um, um, sail their way through because remember they are seasoned, but it was one of those storms that became very scary. At some point, they stopped trying to get over to the other side, but all they were doing now was just trying to save themselves from dying. They were trying to save themselves or save the boat from capsizing and all of them sinking to their death. And in that process, while they were busy with that, um, the, the Bible says at the first watch of the night, so scholar says at 3 a.m., Jesus appears to them walking on the water towards them. And at first glance, they do not recognize him. They think it's a ghost and so they cry. And that, that's my first admission to you this morning or submission to you this morning that when the devil brings storms in our lives, his aim is to obscure Jesus such that instead of running towards him, we can run away from him. There they were in serious, serious trouble, crying, trying to save their lives. 
And there was Jesus, the only person in the world that could save them, walking on top of the water. And they did not even recognize him because their eyes were blinded by the storm that was raging, because their eyes were blinded by the fear that was taking place in their lives. And they were busy trying to save their lives. I don't know if I'm talking to anyone here this morning. <laughs> where you are going through so much in your life, that the storm is raging, that the waves are this high in your life, that on a daily basis, you are no longer trying to save um, the situation, but you're just trying to, if I can just get through today, if I can just get through today, and in that process, your tears are perhaps blocking the view of Jesus, and perhaps all the things that the devil keeps bringing in your head, all the cassettes, as we say in my language, that all the cassettes that the devil is busy playing in your mind, it is his way of trying to obscure Jesus in view. My sister and my brother, can I just tell you something? Jesus is here. He is here. He is in the presence. All we have to do is recognize him. He's there. Anyway, God recognizes, Jesus recognizes that they, they actually can't see that it's him walking on the water. And so, um, because it, it, the Bible just says that they saw and they thought he was a ghost and they cried out. And then the Bible says, oh Lord, I love Jesus. He says he could see that they were terrified. And so he, he speaks the word, be of good cheer, I am. My friends, I have no time to go into that I am, but I want to tell you this morning, whether it is your marriage that is on the rocks, whether it is your finances that are not edging up, whether it is your life that is at stake, can I just say to you this morning, before you go into this Tuesday, my father is in the present and he's saying to us, be of good cheer. I am, I am here, be of good cheer. It is I. And anyway, now here's the interesting thing. I mentioned this yesterday. This whole issue of faith, guys, is not a majority issue. Because the minute Jesus identified himself to all of them, there are 12 of them, but only one in 12 continues the rest of, of chapter 14. Only one in 12 continues the rest of chapter 14. And I love this guy. Guys, in my house, we have a deal when we get to heaven. My, my husband wants to see Rachel because he, he wants to, to see this most beautiful woman in the world. I want to see Peter because I find myself in Peter, especially the pre-resurrection Peter. Anyway, the minute he could see that it's Jesus, Peter says, Lord, if it is you, we'll talk about the if some other time, but command me to come to you walking on the water. Guys, which water? Which water is Peter asking to walk on? The same water that a minute ago he was crying because the water was threatening to kill him. Now he's asking because Jesus is on there. He's asking to walk on top of the same water. That very thing, my friend, that is threatening to kill you, Jesus is walking on top of it. But I commend to you this morning the faith of Peter. What we call crazy faith, others will call it crazy faith, but I would call it radical faith. That the thing that you uh, that is threatening to destroy your life. The thing that is threatening to kill you, my Jesus, our Father God is walking on top of it. And Jesus does not waste time and I don't want to waste time now. He says, come, one word. And I want to believe this morning that he is here with us. One word, come. Now, listen to me. Jesus could have said, come Peter, because it was Peter who was calling. It was Peter who was saying, command me to come to you walking on the water. But Jesus says, come. That come, yes, was to Peter, but that come was to the 12 of them. Because he would have said, come Peter, but he said, come. Meaning he was not just calling Peter, he was calling all the 12 disciples, wanting to give them a godly experience that morning, but only one in 12. And Peter did not think too much about it. He got out. He let go of the boat, which was the safest thing for them for the longest of time until Jesus appeared. He lets go of the boat. And my friends, the miracle of all miracles for me, a human being walks on top of water. And he was able to walk as long as he had his eyes on Jesus. And that is what I'm saying we pray for this morning. The radical faith to focus on Jesus in spite of last night I went I went to bed a little bit 
anxious about our elections because the people did not turn out. And I started to wonder, my goodness, who is going to lead our municipalities? But my Jesus reminded me that we are able to walk even on top of that as long as we put on heavenly blinkers and keep our focus on Jesus, a human being, a mere mortal who was able to walk on water because he was facing Jesus. And I want to just make this point. I made it, but I want to just reiterate this point. That Peter, guys, is walking on the same storm that was threatening to kill them. The same storm. There are people here who are waiting for Jesus to calm the storm. Sometimes he does. He stands up and says, peace be still. But sometimes he will not stop the storm, but he will call you to come to him walking on top of the storm. So if you are sitting here, my friend, you hear the voice of God is calling you, but you are waiting for him to come the storm before you come to him. You might wait until he comes. You might wait until he comes. So Peter is walking on divorce. Peter is walking on financial problems. Peter is walking on COVID. Peter is walking on top of ill health. Peter is walking on top of what we call the times that we are living in. He's walking on top of them. That's number one. Number two, I've already said it, but I want to remind you, whatever it is that you are dealing with, our God, our Jesus is walking on top of it. When the time comes, he will quiet the storm. He will quiet it, but for now, he's on top of it and he's calling you to come on top of it. So the kind of faith that we are talking about is that kind of, that radical faith. But I love Jesus. Because he could have walked on top of the storm and get to the boat where the disciples were and quiet the storm as he did. But God, guys, listen to me. We, God, wants us to get to heaven, having experienced him here. Ellen White says, heaven is a ceaseless approaching to God through Christ. Jesus wants us to experience the miracles that he can perform while we are walking here on top. That is why he called Peter to come and, and be like Jesus, walk on top of the storm. And if you go to the book of Acts, you will see mere mortals who are having a heavenly experience and transferring it to others because that is what God wants in our lives. He wants us to heal like he healed other people. He wants us to walk on water like he walked on water. He wants us to, to walk into a situation and people find life because when he walks into a situation, there's life. He doesn't just want us to be conquerors. He wants us to be more than conquerors. But let me close. For a moment, Peter walks on water. But please take note. Just because God has called you on top of the water and you are walking on top of the water, don't think that devil, the devil is going to step aside and say, hey, man, as in my language would say, now she's on top of the water, let me just let go. No, my friend, no, the devil never stops. In fact, Ellen White says, it is his constant effort, not, not a day effort. It's a constant effort to take our eyes away from Jesus. And as long as we are not looking at Jesus, it doesn't matter how legitimate, whatever it is that you are focusing on. If you are not looking at Jesus, you are at risk of sinking, my friend. And it happened with Peter for a moment. I don't know where his attention went. Some people say he looked back, but the Bible tells us he saw the wind. He went back to look at that which Jesus had saved him from. I have not time to go deep into that. And he got distracted. He saw the wind and he began to sink. In other words, the shortest way to walk on water is to keep our eyes fully on Jesus. There's a song I love. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. The shortest way to walk on water is to keep our eyes on Jesus. And the shortest way to sink is to take our eyes away from Jesus. Where the eye goes, it doesn't matter. Some of us are looking at the pleasures of this world. You're not looking at Jesus. Some of us are looking at life's cares and perplexities. And this is Ellen White. Some are looking at the faults of others. Some are looking at our own faults and our own imperfections. And we are sinking because we are not looking at Jesus. And so this morning, we are living in challenging times. We are living in dangerous times. We, you can sit and focus on the danger. You can sit and focus on the news. But our God is here this morning and we are praying, Lord, will you give us that faith? All for that faith that will not take our eyes off of you. All for that faith that will continue to stubbornly 
focus on Jesus in spite of everything else that's taking place around us. And that's my prayer this morning. And that's a prayer I commend to you this morning, the prayer, the faith to focus on Jesus. But I love what Jesus does as I close. And I'm speaking now to those who are saying, hey, Mama Pote, I wish you had preached this message a month or a week ago. I'm already where Peter was. I have already sunk. I have already taken my eyes off of Jesus. My friend, can I recommend to you as I close? Also the faith to rise, the faith to rise because the minute he started to sing, Peter realized that man, I was walking on the water to Jesus. The Bible says he cried out, Lord, save me. So if you're one of those who was already down there, I commend to you the faith to rise. Lord, save me. The Bible says Jesus, immediately Jesus grabbed him and put him back on the water. And then he says to him, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And the two of them walked back to the boat and when they got there, the storm ceased. And the disciples says, but what kind of man is this? Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege to be called your sons and your daughters. But we want more. We asking for that faith. Go with which we will be able to live the kind of life that you had in mind for us. We pray for that radical faith. And for those of us who have fallen, we pray, Lord, for the faith to rise. Be with us now as we go into the season of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sir.